Let's talk about the menopause and HRT. So HRT gives you cancer, or does it? Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Andre. Cheers to the menopause and cheers to HRT. We'll have a wee sip. Now before I get onto the video, I am not an expert on the menopause and I am not an expert on HRT. I am menopausal and I do take HRT just to start off the video. So I've been asked why I decided to take HRT. It's simple, the word dementia. And I'm gonna be totally honest with you, that's what got me looking into HRT. I was watching a video which led me to another video which led me to Menopause Taylor and she mentioned the fact that taking HRT lowers your risks of dementia. That was me. I was hooked. Alarm bells went and I started doing my research. It's as simple as that. I never ever thought I would be that person that took HRT. I remember older women in my past talking and it would be, oh, so-and-so took HRT and oh, so-and-so took HRT and so on and so forth. So it was something that I never ever thought I would take. My mom accepted her menopause as you know simply aging it was a part of a woman's life and you just got on with it and i suppose i was also of that mindset how wrong was i for me my symptoms were never severe i think my symptoms i confused very much with looking after my mum who had dementia i had her living with me so you know feeling tired, anxiety, um, feeling angry at times, you know, th all these feelings, you know, that you have when you're menopausal. I had and I thought it was a simple fact of looking after my mum. So my symptoms got kind of mixed up with looking after my mum and all you have to do is look up the symptoms of menopause there's a list so long thinning of hair tiredness sleepless nights it's not just the hot flushes that everybody talks about and the night sweats which yes i did have but they weren't that severe i accepted them it wasn't a problem look at the symptoms and you know i had every single one of them but did not realize it was the menopause so let me give you a brief history on myself I had a history of miscarriages before I had my firstborn, my eldest son. I then went on to have a hysterectomy in my late 30s. I had a full hysterectomy. So that means I had my uterus removed and my cervix removed. I still had my ovaries. I know everybody thinks that a full hysterectomy is removing the ovaries, but no that's not what a full hysterectomy is but I had a full hysterectomy which is the removal of your uterus and your cervix so I still had my ovaries so at the time you know I didn't need hormone replacement because my ovaries were still giving me estrogen which is what I am now taking as hormone replacement I was told when I had my hysterectomy that I would probably go through the menopause a lot sooner because I had had a hysterectomy. I would say I don't honestly think I did. It's also said you look at your mum's history to kind of take an average of when you're going to go through the menopause. My mum went through the menopause really early. My mum went through the menopause in her 40s. It was something that she never really discussed. It was something that she just accepted as the natural process of aging. It, and when I think back now, that is such a wrong way to think. Anyway, so my history was, I had my hysterectomy in my late 30s. So how do you know you're in the menopause? Well, it is said that you 
do not have a menstrual period for 12 months continuously not you have a period not that you don't have one for 11 months then have one no it is 12 continuous months now i've had a hysterectomy so there's no way of telling from my menstrual cycle because i didn't have one i still knew i was ovulating i kind of got to know my body really well because i'd had miscarriages and things like that so you get to know how your body works really really well i knew i was still ovulating for a long while after i had my hysterectomy i couldn't tell you when i was going through my perimenopause which is when you are still having a period but you are heading towards your menopause but for a while i haven't been feeling myself now the average age of a woman going through her menopause or being menopausal is 51. now I remember at about the age of 51 having this feeling of bloatiness, just feeling bloated and I'm like, where, where has this come from? Why am I feeling like this? Feeling as if I had put on weight. I hadn't changed anything. I was working full time. I was looking after my mum. I was still working out. I was eating and drinking exactly the same way. And then all of a sudden, I felt bloated. I felt fat. And I remember that was about the age of 51. Didn't think anything of it. I suppose I did in the back of my mind think mm, that's all part of being menopausal but again my symptoms were not severe you know I had the odd night sweat and the odd hot flush you know nothing nothing severe but again I remember being really quite agitated I had this bloatedness I had all the symptoms of a menopausal woman all you have to do is look up the symptoms i had every single one of them but these symptoms can get mixed up with natural aging me looking after my mom and i just i didn't have the time to think about it i didn't have the time to go right i need to look into this it's the menopause no i just got on with it as my mom did now with my mum and her dementia, I couldn't understand, you know, in my head, was, why did she get this dementia? Why is it, you know, why, you know, and then I thought, well, she's, my mum's got it, my gran had it, I'm naturally going to get it as well. But why are we getting this dementia? You know, and it wasn't until I watched the video on Menopause Taylor and her talking about dementia, I knew. I knew I had to do something about this. I knew I had to really do my research. So I started doing my research and realized that the lack of estrogen in a woman also contributes to high cholesterol, heart attacks, stroke, diabetes, dementia, osteoporosis. And I was like, oh my goodness my mum was on medication for diabetes she was a diabetic my mum was on medication for high cholesterol my mum was on medication for something to do with the heart my mum had dementia and it was like oh my goodness i couldn't believe it i it just the jigsaw was coming together for me all the pieces started slotting in that was all i needed to hear at that point for me the benefits outweighed the risks like this that for me it was easy after that i that was it i could see it i could see in front of me what i needed to see my mom went through the menopause early she obviously needed estrogen and it, it just that was it for me so I decided I wanted estrogen. I then did my research. I did more and more research and realized I didn't need progesterone. Progesterone is the hormone that is linked 
to breast cancer. I didn't need progesterone because I didn't have a uterus. Progesterone, a woman only needs progesterone when she's pregnant and to protect her uterus and to protect her uterus when she is taking estrogen. That's why you need progesterone. I didn't need progesterone because I didn't have a uterus. So my risks of breast cancer were no higher to they would have been before taking estrogen. It was a no-brainer for me. And you know, I had basically, my research led me to, I had more benefits to gain from taking estrogen than I did from not taking estrogen. I was also in the right time frame. I am 54. It is said it is after the age of 60 that your um that your chances of breast cancer are heightened. So you know I had everything going for me to take estrogen. So I went to my doctor and I went to discuss HRT and I was basically sent with a flea in the ear saying no chance you no chance you are 54 years old you are definitely menopausal you've probably gone through the menopause you know years and years and years ago there is no reason why you should be taking HRT your symptoms are not severe your chances of cancer are increased away you go and I sat and I said look just give me a blood test so we can see and make sure we, we, you know it was kind of no 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 and he sent me away but I was adamant about the blood test which really didn't tell me anything that I didn't already know but it was a step to seeing another doctor so I then made another appointment with another GP, a GP that was looking after my mum and knew more about my own history. So I made an appointment, I had done my research, I knew everything, I even knew what type of HRT I wanted before I went in and this is what I say to you, you need to do your own research for you. Only you know your history, only you know how you're feeling and only you know what your body needs. So I knew I needed something. I had been running on empty for far too long. I knew I wasn't right for a long time. I knew my weight gain wasn't natural. I knew my the way I was feeling, the, the fact that I had to push myself to do everything. I had to make myself be positive about everything. I knew I wasn't right. I knew something was wrong. I couldn't pinpoint it. You know, when I looked after my mum, I thought it was my mum. When my mum died, it was because my mum had died. When my Lulu died, it was because my Lulu died. And then I was still feeling not myself. So I went to my GP and we discussed hormone replacement. And he said, basically, he didn't have a problem prescribing it to me and especially because I had had a hysterectomy and I didn't have a uterus. My chances of breast cancer were not increased at all and he made that quite clear and I knew that because I had done my research but he had made that quite clear. What he did say to me was when a woman stops taking hormone replacement therapy her chances of cancer are still increased for 10 years after stopping the hormone replacement therapy. Now that would be a woman who is taking progesterone because then your chances are heightened but the other thing is you know it's when you take progesterone it's not that it's giving you cancer the cells are already there it's just maybe slightly increasing the chance now I decided to take the gel form and the reason I decided to take the gel form is when you take the tablet form of estrogen it then increases the chance of blood clots but when you take it in the form of a gel or a patch 
then the chances are not increased. So that's why I wanted a gel. The other reason I wanted a gel and not a patch was because I work out and I and sweat, so I didn't want the worry of the patch becoming unstuck. Now, the other hormone is, and I'm just gonna touch on this because I haven't done my research on it, it is testosterone. The wee bit of research that I have done on it, a lot of testosterone hormones are not licensed and it's not something at this time that I feel I need. I feel I need estrogen to make me feel like me again, to lower my chances of dementia, to lower my chances of osteoporosis, to lower my chances of cholesterol and to lower my chances of stroke and a heart attack. This gel here decreases the chances of all those things so why shouldn't I take it my body needs estrogen now you know years and years and years ago women didn't live this long so once they stop producing estrogen yeah we're gonna be it a few years after that now we are living a lot longer and that's why we still need estrogen I have been on this now it will be two weeks on Tuesday. Today as I speak to you, it is Friday. And they say you don't feel the effects of it for about a month. I think at this point in time, I am starting to feel the effects of this. I am starting to feel more like myself. Again, do not take my word for it. This is about me and my journey. You need to do the research about you and your journey and what you need. I am gutted I didn't know all of this. I wish my mum had taken it. She went through the menopause in her 40s and I, you know, I honestly at this time believe it was the lack of oestrogen. You know, when I went to see my doctor, he also said to me, you know, when hormone replacement therapy first came out it was prescribed to everybody and it was wonderful and then they did the research and the statistics told you that women were getting breast cancer so on and so forth and now they've done more research and they have found that it's, pro it's actually progesterone that increases your chances of breast cancer and women that you know don't have a uterus don't need progesterone so they don't have an increase risk of breast cancer you know things change all the time you know one minute it's good the next minute it's bad so you have to take that chance for yourself i have taken that chance at the moment i am so glad i have found you know something that is making andre feel like andre again and you know there's so much more to be said about it but i just wanted to answer some of the question as to why I've decided to go on hormone replacement therapy and I know it's a taboo subject I know talking about menopause is a taboo subject and HRT and you know I am still in that frame of in my 50s where it's still safe to take this and I am so glad I'm taking I look like an advertisement for this don't I so just a quick um word on actual estrogen you know estrogen comes from different sources my one this is the estrogel and it is made from a yam which is it comes from a yam which is uh, identical to the one that we as women make in our bodies so this is body identical estrogen so on that note I hope I have answered your question. I'll probably make more videos. If you have any more questions, if you have any thoughts, if you want to add your own journey in the comments, please do so because your comments will help other people that read them because we all read the comments and we all like to hear about everybody else's journeys, the pros and cons that you have come across. So again cheers and i'll catch you next time bye